So here's an example. I picked Apple. I think that's a company everyone knows, of course. And they have requirements to have financial statements go to shareholders and to the SEC. This is the Form 10-K. You'll hear that a lot. The Form 10-K is required by the SEC for all publicly traded companies. And it is a full set of annual financial data along with other information. Companies in the old days would have a different statement that is a lot friendlier looking with pictures and graphs and charts. And that would go to shareholders to meet the requirement of annual reports to the shareholder. But now companies don't do that as frequently. They don't take the time, effort or money to create a separate statement for a, a different audience. Instead, they hand them a copy of this 10K, which I'm smiling because it is really hard to read. And the old ones were much easier to read because they made effort to explain it to like normal people like you. But now we all have to be finance people to read a 10K. So I'm gonna go through just some of the highlights of what you'll find in this document, this 10K for Apple. The year chosen is 2021. Doesn't matter which year we pick because for our purposes, it's what we're gonna see year in, year out. One company versus another company is the same. It's a standard form 10K. All right. So the table of contents are, guess what, standardized. So these items and num numbers you see on the left-hand side are prescribed to the SEC. You, you don't extra, you get extra credit or extra points for being creative. In fact, uh, it would not comply. So you have part one, two, three, four. Within each part, you have items. And those items tell us various things that were required or are required by the SEC. So there's some specific things that I'll point out now. Not to say the whole document uh, shouldn't be looked at, I guess it should be, but there are a couple of sections that are particularly important. The first is the MDNA, Management's Discussion and Analysis, and that's pretty descriptive of what it is. It's management telling us what happened this year, and it always covers the period of time that the report covers. So if it's discussing 2021, it's going to tell us what happened this year. It's supposed to be objective and unbiased, good, bad, and ugly of what happened this year. And I noticed that I said, should. Some companies, I would say most companies, are tempted to spin it a little bit. So when you read this, know that it's not audited and it's valuable because it is in the management's opinion, but it's something that you should have a little bit of a filter to, to not take everything at face value, all right? So look at the MDNA as a useful set of explanations about what happened in the company and why it happened, right? The next one is audited. And these are the financial statements and supplementary data. These are audited by an outside firm. They are, again, very prescriptive. It's under GAAP, the Generally Accepted Accounting Principle. And they are the statements we looked at, those four statements you'll find, along with other supplemental information, which are called notes to the financial report or the notes to the financial statements. So these are the two items inside the, the SEC 10K that are going to be most important for your financial analysis of any company, not just Apple. So let's look a little bit more at each of the statements and what we're going to see when we look at the statements themselves. So first, the income statement. Well, it's easy. Revenue minus expense is profit. Okay, that's true at a high level. Next is it covers a period of time. The one we just looked at covers a year, right? It's, it's an annual report, but it could be a quarter or it could be a month if it's internal. Then it would then show multiple years side by side. And that facilitates our analysis, our comparisons, our trend analysis, things like that. Because if you have a benchmark, it's easier to analyze. What are the insights that we want to get from the income statement? Well, it could be, is the company profitable or is it losing money? Next is for every dollar of revenue, how much do we, we end up in profit? And the rest of it is eaten up by paying our expenses. Or how is the company doing over the years provided? So if they gave us three years of information, let's look at it. Are they growing sales, growing profit or not? Next is we'll look at the Apple statement. These are actual numbers and I've sometimes summarized it to make it more digestible but it's generally untouched on what you'll see in their form 10K. So we see on top net sales, which are revenues. We see on the bottom net income. And in between, we see 
different categories of expenses and different subtotals of profit along the way. So we have net sales, we take our cost of sales, we get gross profit. We take out operating expense, we get operating profit. You take out the non-operating items, you get income before taxes. You take out taxes, then you have net income. So we see we have these subtotals along the way tell us slightly different things about how the company did and where did good or bad things happen. Gross profit, operating profit, pre-tax profit, net profit are all different levels of profits that we'll see in a typical income statement. And on top, it's always on top. And here I wanna say that sales is what companies sometimes use. Other companies will use the word revenues. And I know it's confusing when we have so many synonyms that uh, mean the same thing, but think of sales as sales or revenues. The next is cost of what you sold is that matching that we discussed in Gap. Here we had product sales of 297 and the cost of making the products we sold was 192. So comparing those, we see the margin, how much profit margin they had in their products. In the sales of services, they got $68 billion in services and it only cost them 20. So you can see right away that the profit margin on services is higher than the profit margin on selling their hardware, which kind of makes sense, right? So even though there's all this data, we could see that the order and understanding how the numbers work allow us to make some pretty simple, hopefully simple in time for you, simple analysis of how the company's doing and where it makes its money. Then we have the gross profit from product sales called gross profit. Sometimes you'll see companies call it gross margin. I'm kind of a stickler for the vocabulary and here's uh, what I would recommend for you. Anytime you see the word profit or income, that's money, that's a dollar amount. Anytime you see a word like margin, it's a percent of something, typically a percent of sales. So in this particular case, I would say Apple's gross profit was $152 billion and their gross margin can be derived by taking 152 divided by sales of 365 and whatever that ratio is, about 40 something percent, uh, that would represent the, the gross margin or sometimes call it the gross profit margin of Apple, right? So that's, that's uh, our midpoint there. Then we have cost to run the business, operating expense. It could be salaries, it could be rent, insurance, all those things are in SG&A, selling general and administrative. And then in a case of a tech company like Apple, there's a lot of R&D. In fact, it's a shocking amount of R&D that their total cost of running the business is 21,973,000 and their R&D was 21,914,000. That's an amazing amount of money they're putting in R&D. They can afford to do that because they make so much profit that despite those high levels of investment, they still earn $94 billion um, in the year 2021. So these are uh, the different levels that we look at Apple in this example. But this format is pretty typical of the captions and the subtotals and things like that for companies. You'll see they're not 100% identical, but let's say 90%, right? So knowing this format will do you a lot of good service. All right. Next is the balance sheet. So that is financial position. In fact, some people call the statement the statement of financial position. They don't even call it the balance sheet. And that's a more descriptive name for the statement. And what it shows is assets, liabilities, and equity. And it's the only one that is as of a particular date. That whole as of thing I did with the pillars, you'll see it here. The insights you would get from looking at this statement, do we have enough money to pay our bills? Or do we have a lot of debt and that might burden us to not be able to make payments on the debt? Or how much do we need in assets to run the business? And what kind of assets do we need to run the business? And do we have a war chest? In other words, money that we can use for rainy day funds or to make an acquisition of a competitor or enter a new line of business. All of these types of questions can be answered in total or in part by looking at the balance sheet. So on the bottom, you'll see this simple relationship put into the formula and a, a, a sentence. And that sentence is the assets we owned were paid for from either borrowings 
or from capital that we got from our shareholders. And that gets us to the accounting equation of assets equals liabilities and equity, which is the foundation of all accounting, right? Not to make things overly dramatic, but it is that that accounting equation underlies the entire accounting system that we have in the field of accounting. All right, so let's look at a balance sheet for Apple. And first thing you notice is that it's classified, right? There's a classified balance sheet. What that means is we have current, which are assets that are either cash now or will become cash or used up in one year. So think of one year. And non-current, which are longer lived assets, which are more than a year. So in this particular case, they have 34 billion in cash in checking accounts and savings accounts and cash equivalents, which are just ways for them to park their money and earn a little bit of interest while they're, they're idle, while the funds are idle. Marketable securities are just that. They're stocks and bonds held by the company as investments that they could use, sell it, and then use that money for whatever purpose they choose. Then we have accounts receivable, which are monies that are owed to the company from its customers. So if Apple sells to Best Buy, the Best Buy company will owe money to Apple. That is called an accounts receivable. So they're always from customers. It's not some extraneous receivable, it's from customers. Then with inventories, okay, that's easy. Those are the iPhones and the Macs and whatever else they have in inventory. So inventory are finished goods or goods you have that are really ready to sell to customers. Then in their case, they have another group called vendor non-trade receivables. And these could be some receivables from some of their partners, business partners. That's not something we see in every single business, but Apple has them and it's a pretty large amount, uh, $25 billion worth of these non-trade receivables. And then we have other current assets. It could be things like insurance that you paid in advance that you're gonna expense over the rest of the year. It could be uh, subscriptions to magazines or other services they would have, but they all share the trait that they will be used up in a year. Non-current are longer term, like marketable securities that you have a policy or an intention of holding it for more than a year. These could be bonds. So a company can buy bonds and they want to have it as eventually usable funds, but their intention is to hold on for, for a while. So they classify it as non-current. They're a wealthy company. They have the luxury of having these things. A lot of companies don't have any securities and other companies may have securities, but they're all current because they're probably going to use them in the next year, but not the case for Apple. They have marketable securities that they expect to hang on to for more than a year, therefore non-current. Then the next is property, plant, and equipment. We call it PP&E, and that's the land building equipment for warehouses, construction of facilities, things like that are all in PP&E. And then other assets. In this case, it's a lot of money. It's 48 billion. Like what are other assets? In their case, when they acquire another company, some of that acquisition cost is assigned to what we call an intangible asset or goodwill. So that's another asset. They may license patents from other companies. So those are long-term assets that are, again, intangible. So they're all types of things that may go into other assets. And in this case, $48 billion worth. So we see that total current assets for Apple is $134 billion. Total non-current is $216 billion for a total of $351 billion in assets. Okay, wow, that's it? Yeah, that's it. Those are the assets for Apple as broken down into the classified balance sheet of current and non-current. And then we've just looked at the line items that we find in their balance sheet. And hopefully it starts making sense of why they're assets. They're things owned by Apple that have value and that they're categorized in a way that helps you interpret where's their money going. So the next side is the right side, if you will, the balance sheet that we often say because left side is assets, right side is liabilities and equity, and they have to balance. All right, so liability, guess what? They're broken into current and non-current, classified section of the liabilities. In current, these are amount of monies that are owed within one year. We have accounts payable, which are monies owed to your vendors. Here, it's $54 billion. It could be to Foxconn for, for uh, building their Apple products, right? Their iPhones. Next are other current liabilities, which comprise all kinds of other things. It could be interest they owe to a bank. It could be bonuses or commission owned, owed to its em employees and managers, 
or it could be taxes that are owed to the government, payroll taxes, income taxes. What they all share is they're due within a year. Then we have deferred revenues. And this generally are monies you get in advance of you actually doing the work to earn the money. Let's say that they sell a subscription for one year. Apple can't count all the revenue in the month they receive the cash. It needs to be earned over the period of time that the subscription covers. So that's an example of deferred revenues. Sometimes it's called unearned revenues, right? The same thing. Then there's commercial paper. This, uh, again, unique to large, powerful companies. When they borrow money, they could just put out to the world that, hey, I need to borrow some money. Who wants to lend us some money? They don't necessarily even have to go to a bank or the securities markets. They could issue their own commercial paper. So these are, think of it as loans that are issued by Apple to people that are, are investors that will provide them money and they owe it back with interest. So that's what they are. Think of them as just another form of loans made by big, powerful companies. And last is term debt. Term debt means that it's owed to a financial institution. That's debt. Term means that there's a set duration of time. Could be three months, six months, things like that. It's a term. There's a time frame to it. And since it's in current liabilities, we know that that term is due within one year. Right? It's not like a five-year loan. It's at most a one-year loan. And the next category are non-current liabilities. We have term debt again. Oh, what's that? Well, it's debt you owe with a time frame that's more than a year. And in the case of what if it's split? What if you have money owed uh, equally over the next three years? Well, we would actually present the what's due in the coming year as short term and what's due, due in years two and three as long term. So we'd actually split up that loan amount into uh, short term and long term. And then other liabilities could be anything. It could be pension plans or other contracts that span more than a year. And their case, $53 billion worth. So the total liabilities is $287 billion, comprised of $125 in short term and $162 in long term. You note there's a typo there. It should not have shareholders' equity. It should just be liabilities. All right. Next one is shareholders' equity. Remember the, the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus shareholders' equity. Well, here we are, shareholders' equity. And generally, it's broken into two main blocks. The first is contributed capital, which are monies put in by shareholders when they first sold stock uh, in Apple to new investors. And the other retained earnings, which are profits we kept in the companies, which are generally profits minus the dividends. And we have another classification here. You see accumulated other comprehensive income. You'll see that when we get into our main course, that's a more technical topic that uh, is part of equity, right? But I'll skip that for now because it's beyond the scope of this introduction to accounting. If we added the liabilities from the prior slide to the 63 billion in this slide, we end up with 351. And if you compare the 351 to what we saw a few minutes ago for assets, you know it's equal. Assets equals liabilities and capital. Now, if you don't believe me, we'll see it here. So we put it together, right? So typically in a statement, you'll see them really close together. We notice right away that assets are 35102. The liabilities and equity also, uh, 35102. And we see the classification of short-term, long-term for both assets and liabilities. And we also see line items that are presented. Right. So what we've gone through is the balance sheet for Apple uh, for 2021.